Welcome back to Press Reviews Middle East in Depth. As the world is looking closely at Egypt's shift back to military rule, let's see what the analysts are saying in print media. Washington-based El Monitor features a special piece on Egypt titled Sisi Runs for President in Nasser's Shadow, where colonist Wael Nawara, who is also an Egyptian activist, questions whether, whether Abdel Fattah Sisi is as Nasserist as Nasserists wish, in reference to the 60s pan-Arab Egyptian president Gamal Abdel Nasser. Sisi has been persistently compared with Gamal Abdel Nasser by Egyptians in the street and in the media. Nasser's posters have been raised in Tahrir Square almost since the beginning of the January the 25th revolution, expressing a deep sense of nostalgia for the 1960s, although the majority of Egyptians living today were born during Hosni Mubarak's rule. But is Sisi as Nasserist as Nasser's loyal fans wish him to be and as his critics dread? Sisi tried to assure Egyptians of his commitment to plural democracy, saying, it is neither right nor is it acceptable for my candidacy to confiscate the right and duty of anyone who sees himself worthy to come forward and run for president. Egypt was a rich country when Abdel Nasser became president. If he succeeds, General Sisi, however, will be assuming responsibility of a country deeply in debt with a faltering economy and facing hostile challenges at home and abroad. Between Abdel Nasser and uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, there are many similarities but also differences. Where Nasser was confrontational and impulsive, Sisi seems calm and cal calculating. Nasser presented a populist agenda of focusing on redistribution of wealth, while General Sisi's message is, there is no wealth to be distributed. Egyptians must first word, work hard to get out of the economic helter-skelter. Well, Nawara concludes by saying before Nasserist enthusiasts prematurely celebrate a return to the 1960s, they should read more carefully into Sisi's messages. It would be foolish for Sisi or anyone else to repeat mistakes that prove disastrous and policies that could never be sustained. Perhaps what Sisi has most in common with Abdel Nasser is a confessed vision to building a strong and independent Egypt. And in light of the hardships now and those expected ahead, no one can envy the coming president of Egypt, whoever he may be. From barracks to ballots, El Sisi's journey towards Egypt presidency, a piece in the Egyptian Ahram newspaper looks at Egypt's hugely popular military chief, Abdel Fattah Sisi, who resigned to run for presidency. The writer Hatem Maher starts by reminding us that many opponents of the Muslim Brotherhood thought Mohammed Mursi had brought the army under his control once and for all when he appointed a deeply religious general as defense minister. But not only did the president trigger his own demise in doing so, it also emboldened General Abdel Fattah Sisi to emerge from the shadows as a national savior and a powerful leader in the making. El Sisi's decision to run for presidency signals uh, the imminent return of military strongmen to the presidency, more than three years after the overthrow of Hosni Mubarak, who was considered a major blow to the army's control over state affairs. El Sisi was mainly appointed as a defense minister because he is a devout Muslim. The Brotherhood thought that would help them gain control over the military establishment. Hatem Maher says that opponents portray El Sisi as an oppressor who orchestrated a coup to restore a police state, while supporters hail him as a hero who rescued Egypt from a potential civil war and a strong man who is capable of bringing much needed stability to the turmoil stricken country. Sisi was cautious when he asked whether he had any presidential aspirations, but changed his tone after basking in a popularity not seen since the era of another military strongman who is Gamal Abdel Nasser. Both leaders have toppled leaders, battled Islamists, enjoyed wide support among ordinary people, and have, according to their critics, quashed dissent. On the other hand, Hatem Maher observes hundreds of police and army personnel have been killed by jihadist groups in nationwide militant attacks since Morsi's ouster. The writer quotes Sisi saying uh, in a military ceremony in December, do not worry or fear the army will sacrifice for Egypt. We will eliminate terrorism. The, do not uh, allow these terrorist actions to affect you. If you want freedom and stability, which is not achieved easily, then you have to trust God and your army and your police. And joining us today is political commentator and activist Wissam Al Hamwi. Thank you very much for joining the show. Thank you, Carl. Mr. al Hamwi, we saw a lot of analytical comparison of the circumstances around the coup of uh, Gamal Abdel Nasser and uh, Field Marshal Abdel Fattah Sisi. Uh, my first question uh, would be, do you think a military figure like uh, Field Marshal Abdel Fattah Sisi is what Egypt needs to maintain stability in the country? 
Uh, I think that's the last thing that Egypt needs at the moment. Uh, it's the last thing that Egypt needs and the whole region needs is uh, is, a, is a, another military dictator uh, that will try to uh, re, re bring back to life the image of uh, uh, a, a military figure that uh, would dictate whatever the country needs and how it's going to uh, lead uh, its uh, mm -hmm. future. Yes, and why do you think, in, when you mentioned dictatorship, uh, in comparison to uh, President Morsi, of course, who was ousted by, uh, by Abdel Fattah Sisi, um, do you think uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, in your opinion, would they be uh, more uh, democratic in their practice if, if they were remaining in power instead of Sisi? I don't think the Muslim Brotherhood were very successful in uh, uh, practicing democracy in Egypt, but uh, the way that uh, Sisi dealt with it was was uh, was very much worse than the, the way uh, Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, I don't I don't uh, support Muslim Brotherhood, but uh, on the same time, I don't believe that uh, the way they uh, they were treated uh, was was reasonable. Uh, I, I call uh, Sisi a dictator because. Uh, from the way he's presenting himself, the the executions uh, mm -hmm. that he's is trying to push for, the uh, trying to, you know, his uh, uh, ousting a whole political party that was that has just won the election elections in Egypt mm -hmm. in this way and calling it a terrorist organization is uh, is an indicator for for something that is slowly emerging and also also the comparison with uh, Abdel Nasser. It's 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 a, it's a totally it's a totally uh, different different era, Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't. I'm, I'm, uh, this is my belief. People will not be accepting uh, a, a government or uh, a, a leader that will build or claim to build the prosperity of the country based on abuse uh, abuse of human rights and oppression. So this is what's happening in the, in, in Egypt at the moment. Uh, a lot of uh, arrests, a lot of uh, oppression. It's not only against uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, uh, it's also against uh, activists from different uh, uh, backgrounds. Anyone who uh, opposes uh, Sisi's policy mm -hmm. in Egypt now is being uh, oppressed. So me as, a, uh, as an actor in the civil society, I think this is a danger for the future of mm -hmm. Egypt. Yes, Egypt needs... Uh, a strong leader, a charismatic leader, someone who can take the country out of uh, where, uh, out of the situation where it's uh, uh, at the moment. But uh, it definitely does not need to start it, this with uh, abuse of human rights and, and oppression. Uh, Could so we say, uh, we Sam, that this uh, oppression is just a stage to move forward, it's just a phase now, and it will be resolved later once order is re-established in Egypt? I don't believe that there is such a thing that uh, stability can be built on oppression. I mean, uh, uh, Nasser is uh, romanticized and is thought of as this great leader. But I mean, if we look at the legacy uh, of what he left now, it's a dictatorship that has caused uh, the, uh, the where, where, where Egypt is, is uh, now. I mean, uh, poverty and uh, dictatorship practically since mm -hmm. since that time uh the the position of the muslim brotherhood is is largely built by this uh pattern of uh criminalizing them uh, unfairly so they, mm -hmm. they they get a lot of their support this way i mean the last thing that uh you want to to uh deal with uh, say uh extremism in the community is by Fighting it in in a in an unreasonable unreasonable way and mm -hmm. by using violations of human rights and and, and executions. Uh, we Sam, uh, while uh, Gamal um, Abdel Nasser uh, cracked down on Islamist groups in Egypt back in the 50s, do you think uh, Al Sisi would be more uh, tolerant eventually, not at the moment at, at this uh, particular phase? But do you think after being, uh, if he was elected president, do you think he will be more tolerant to the Muslim Brotherhood? Will it still have home in Egypt? It's it's really difficult to know. I mean. Nasser was best ally of the Muslim Brotherhood or Muslim Brotherhood figures before he came to power, after he came to power, if he, 
this this thing has reversed. It's difficult to know what uh, CC is going to be about. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just have to wait might, and see maybe, uh, more and uh, then things will get uh, more clear eventually. Many thanks again for joining us with Sam El Hamwi, political uh, commentator based in Birmingham. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. For more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching and bye for now.